Well, let's call the meeting to order at 5.04. Welcome, everybody. I hope you've had a good month so far. And uh, we don't have any members of the public just yet, as far as I'm aware. Is that correct, Sean? Yes. Okay. So the first thing to do is to review the minutes from last month. Did you all have a chance to review them? Okay, so I will go ahead and motion um, uh, to approve the min minutes from May 13th. Second. All right, any comments, Babette? Okay, any adjustments, changes, anything? All right, so let's uh, vote to approve the minutes. We'll start with Babette. I need you to unmute. I need a verbal. Yes, I vote to approve. Okay. Nick? Yes. Valeria? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Karen? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Essence? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Sam? Yes. Did I miss anybody? All right, Sean, do you want to bring up the agenda or do we just go for it? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, let's see. I think the first thing that we'll be going over is the Everybody can grants, see that. the grants program that we very rapidly updated and ran. Rachel, yeah. you... Rachel, you are... Oh. Yeah, I mean... It was good. We funded everyone and uh, Sean's notified everyone. I don't know if you want to update on when like disbursements and stuff are going out. I don't know when that is, but. Yeah, so we're still, um, we'll, we have uh, 12 completed applications. We're still waiting on E-Verify from a lot of people. So there was a little bit of confusion about um, so just so you all know, as other commissioners, the state of Indiana, if you get a grant over $1,000, you're required to enroll in E-Verify. So uh, groups are getting together. It's a little bit of a challenge if you are a volunteer nonprofit or if you're not employing people to get proof of the fact that you're not doing that with E-Verify. So we have most everybody um, approved as a vendor um, or we're getting their vendor forms filled out and then we're just waiting on E-Verify affidavits. Um, so, and we're working slowly on getting the claims uh, out there so that we can get people paid pretty quickly. So uh, those that's all underway right now. Cool. And then um, I guess the only other update is we, um, Brian, Sean, and I met last week to kind of discuss, um, do a, a quick debrief between uh, uh, the three of us on how quickly that process went and moving forward and looking at other grants. And um, one thing that we've received feedback on and that we're hoping to put together with the grants committee is um, creating a more uh, transparent conflict of interest um, form or sheet or something that we can include on the um, on the website as well so that the public can can see what our policies are and what our process is so it's not just the grants committee knowing what the conflict of interests are but we actually are hoping to make that more public. Um, Brian or Sean, do you guys want to add to that at all? Yeah. Uh, yeah, at this point, really, we're doing research into seeing what verbiage or uh, information other groups are using. And then we will propose uh, to the entire commission just to make sure that we are being as clear and transparent as possible moving forward. Um, but it, so it's 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 in the back burner in a way. Um, we're hoping to have it finished by the next round of grants that we're doing with the BUEA. And that round I believe is gonna be at the end of summer. Um, Sean, if you have any updates on that, but besides that, that's everything I have. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm working with the BUEA on that. We just had a BUEA meeting. Um, there's some other things that have kind of come up in the meantime that have kind of uh, not necessarily slowed that, brought that timeline down, but just, other kind of staff capacities right now, uh, but we're we're looking into that, and I can get into that later with uh, uh, in the meeting a little bit. So, 
And then the last thing that we're still going to do with this cycle is schedule a call with all of the grantees to go over feedback information needs uh, and information that will help us help guide the second round. Oh, right. actually, that makes me think of one question. <laughs> so final reports, speaking of like wrap up for this round, um, I'm assuming we'll want to redraft our final report again, since it's no longer super relevant to the questions that we asked. It's in the contract. It's in the MOU, what our expectations of a final report are. Okay, so I don't need to create a no. Google form or anything. Okay, great. It's, uh, since it's, since there's no projects and things like that, it was yeah. We 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 listed very key things in the memorandum of understanding. I think it's you know, tracking impacts to COVID, staff losses um, or elimination of staff positions, those kinds of things. Uh, marketing campaigns, proof of marketing for both the BAC and the BUEA. So, um, it's all spelled out in the MLU. Okay, yeah, I I remembered seeing that list, but I I just I. Uh, I guess it's just a matter of like, we'll probably have to remind a lot of organizations to submit that information at the end of the year or whenever we get through COVID. Just yeah, I think we we extended it to 2021, like March 31st of 2021. So that's something we're planning on going over in the fall with everybody. So cool. just checking. All right. Any questions regarding grants from anybody? Okay, so let us move on to public art projects and I'll hand it over to Sean and Nick. Nick, you wanna take it off from here and I'll fill in the gaps? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, for, for starters, uh, on Friday, um, Sean sent out an RFQ uh, for the Trades District um, garage. Um, the, the deadline for submissions is July 8th, um, so we have about a, a month where this is going to sit open. Um, again, this is uh, an interior um, installation in the stairwell there that, that Sean's showing. Um, the, the rough timeline we're going to work with is we're going to have those uh, submissions come in by July 8th um, and then aim to work through most of the process um, by the first week of August. So for, for those who have not participated um, in this sort of public art review, um, what, what we're gonna do is everything will come in to Sean. Um, Sean will do some initial sorting um, into you know, sort of like a, a, a recommended yes, no, maybe um, sort of piles. Um, uh, to kind of organize it for us. Um, we'll still review uh, every uh, submission um, and we'll allow uh, everyone on the review panel um, to give some initial feedback um, in, a, in a Google Sheet where we have everything listed um, and we'll have a conversation um, to talk through that feedback and we'll aim to identify uh, two finalists. Um, once we have those finalists nailed down, what we'll do is we'll ask for um, a, a more thorough uh, proposal of work, um, which uh, I believe we'll, we'll have a budget for, um, uh, Sean, what, what do we typically do, like $500 or so? Yeah, it depends on how much time we yeah. give them, right? Uh, a baseline is 500, sometimes it's a thousand if you need a quick turnaround, so it just kind of depends on uh, how competitive the pool of applications are. For example, it, it, just for um, former commissioners, when we, we couldn't get down to three submissions for the trades district, so we did five. And so everybody got 500. So that it just kind of depends on how many qualified uh, individuals apply and who, who we want to try to, uh, who we would like to explore concepts further, so. So yeah, so we'll, we'll get detailed proposals from um, hopefully the, the two finalists and then we'll do uh, a final review of those and vote. Um, so uh, while we are in this period of collecting submissions, um, obviously we have some time still, but by the first week of July, um, it would great, be great to have anyone who wants to participate in this review raise their hand. 
um, so we can have everyone, you know, sort of prepped and ready to go um, by the time all the submissions are in. Um, we also need to talk about uh, member or members of the public um, who will want to have participate in that as well. We've typically had one or two. Um, and yeah, I, I think, I think if, if we can basically get it all figured out by, I think we said roughly the first week of August, um, that'll put us in good shape. Um, trying to think other, other details in here. Um, the, the budget listed, uh, is $75,000. Um, now that, uh, it does not include, um, approximately $5,000, which, um, we're basically setting aside for future maintenance um, and upkeep of the project, which is not something that um, historically uh, the BAC has been good about. Um, but in the last couple of years, we're trying to be more mindful of um, so that we're not basically left with pieces in our collection later on that we don't have budget to maintain um, and have things fall into disrepair. Um, yeah, I think I think those are the big beats. You know the. If you haven't had a chance to read through the RFQ um, and uh, haven't dealt with this sort of thing before, you know, feel free to, to read through that and ask any questions of, of Sean or I. And um, also feel free to share your network and mm -hmm. people might be interested. And, and for the newer commissioners, just something to keep in mind, uh, just a little bit of background um, for why there's so much to these RFQs. Um, you know, equity and inclusion is a very important factor for all of us at the Arts Commission. So, for example, um, when we when I first got to the city, we did a big SWOT analysis, which were the like to try to figure out what the barriers for entry for artists of color, women artists, um, and first time public artists. Um, and so, what we've done in our calls is reflected that. So that's why, um, for example, a very key statement that we have is successful, creative, innovative incomparable projects or potential for new work to be accomplished in the public sphere so that you know artists that might have an idea but maybe haven't had the opportunity to do a public project before can be on the same playing field as somebody that has, has devoted 30 years to public art projects we wanted to um, you know one of the things that we got criticism for is that uh, particular artists were always getting the same commissions uh, so that we can diversify our collection we also added fabrication services that helps us um, for those artists that might not know how to build stuff or you know, predominantly might be a multimedia artist um, but needs to fabricate steel. We have kind of uh, pre-vetted uh, fabricators. And then we also offer a program through CDFI Friendly Bloomington to potentially help artists who don't have access to liquid capital. So it's pretty expensive, uh, the public art realm, right, $75,000. And just for your all's understanding, when you work with the city of Bloomington and most cities, it's probably, usually you're not paid until there's certain phases of completion. Design and construction documents being produced, which can be very expensive, those kinds of things. So if people don't have access to liquid capital, we can help them use the, use the contract with the city as a way to get a guarantee on a low interest loan. So it's a really kind of robust, um, Kind of equitable distribution of how to do public art calls and then also paying artists to develop their ideas is pretty pretty radical too so we've we've been able to um, kind of re-change how public art calls are done in the region any yeah. questions Um, we, we do, um, open this for any artists across, across the, the states, right? Not just Bloomington. Do we have a preference? Yeah, I would say that like the language we've been using is Indiana preferred right now, uh, okay. for a preference to artists based in Indiana, just because I think of COVID and putting artists to work, but it is a national call. Okay. Uh, and so if you know of community members, uh, that, uh, you know, our, our artists that are based in Cincinnati or Indianapolis, we're, we're definitely interested. And, and, and then even, you know, other, you know, potential, but I would say that Indiana is preferred, but that doesn't mean that, you know, one or two of the finalists might not be based in Indiana. Okay. 
and, and in terms of reaching folks, um, you know, to, to, to Bryony's point, you know, obviously, I, you know, we're asking for all of your help um, to help uh, pass this along to folks, to help promote this, make sure it, it reaches folks far and wide. Um, but Sean, do you want to give people a quick summary of who, who you've sent this to and, and how this gets advertised from, uh, from the city? Yeah, so it uh, we have an artist listserv that I think roughly has somewhere around 200 uh, artists um, interested in working in projects. Uh, so, you know, some of them might not necessarily be uh, public artists, but, uh, you know, it's a, a database that the city houses. Um, we share that, you know, that call with Art Alliance of Greater Bloomington for their networks, Gallery Walk, I've asked to forward along to their, you know, various artists that they've represented, those kinds of things. We are featured on the, the Indianapolis Art Council public art site. Um, they have like a call for opportunities. Uh, we will be getting this up on the, uh, there's a, a, a website called Codex and uh, publicartist.org. Uh, so those are more national. Uh, and then just like email invitations as well, just to let other artists, other public art administrators in the community. Uh, there's, a, there's an Indiana public artist Facebook group that the Indiana Arts Commission hosts. So there's a variety of those things. I think we're gonna be in one of the IAC newsletters. So it, it's a pretty robust, uh, I mean, I've already gotten 10 submissions and about 35 inquiries. So um, it's, people are looking for work right now. <laughs> Great. Um, any questions about this project specifically? Uh, I did just notice that you were um, saying it's very in inclusive and all that, um, but then on the, it says professional artists are recommended. Is that what mean? I don't know. Can you qualify that or what does that mean? Uh, where, where are you pointing to? Artist eligibility, all professional visual artists. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just anybody who decides to call themselves a professional. Okay, I, that just seems a little intimidating to people who aren't professional, but I don't know. Just wanted to say something about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, we can we can look into that. All right, shall we move on to the next project, Nick? Yeah. Um, so the, the Jordan River project is a new one. Um, Sean, since this is sort of late breaking, do you want to run through this? Yeah, 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 no problem. Uh, so um, there, this is going to be a potential project with uh, the utilities. Um, and so what's going on with that is um, the Jordan River runs through downtown. Um, we are replacing, utilities is replacing uh, a culvert starting uh, around, I believe, um, 4th Street that goes all the way down to 1st Street and then it kind of daylights there and goes into Switchyard Park or what eventually becomes Switchyard Park. And um, it's a three-year, $11 million project uh, that's pretty robust. And we're going to partner with utilities to consider um, an RFQ for three or four, potentially five artists to pursue public art, temporary public art pieces during the construction, uh, the implementation, and then the, the finish kind of uh, uh, repair of the Jordan River. Uh, the mayor is very interested in you know, celebrating the fact that Jordan River exists, uh, that it goes through our downtown. And so this also gives us an opportunity to hire artists that kind of similar to what we're doing, hoping for with the Trades District RFQ you know, um, artists that use sound or light or multimedia kind of kind of can kind of have access to this public art opportunity. So specifically looking for, you know, a sound artist, maybe potentially partnering with a poet uh, to explore the Jordan River, uh, looking at maybe a public artist to think about some kind of sculpture or series of sculpture that celebrates the Jordan River, the fact that it's an invisible, you know, water element that runs through a downtown. Um, and so what our, our hope is through the public art committee is to get an RFQ out um, in the next uh, couple months, if not sooner. And uh, then like similar to what we do with the trades district RFQ, uh, 
pay those artists to kind of refine their ideas and then select a series of artists that would go into the 2021-2022 uh, budget cycles for commissioning. So it's a pretty interesting and uh, exciting opportunity that the mayor kind of uh, convinced both the utilities and uh, myself to kind of uh, dig, dig a little deeper and come up with a, a fun kind of art experience opportunity for Bloomington. That's very unique and very different from what we traditionally do. So. And, and so, to, so to clarify, um, this is not, uh, we're, we're looking at this as a seeking temporary installations or temporary works, right? Yes, yes. So cool. it's not it's not a, a permanent, you know, fixed structure that's going to be 50 years in the community, that kind of stuff. Right. And so it's not uh, it's not subject to the 1% ordinance, correct? Right. Funding will have to come from other places. No, yeah, it'll have to come from other places. Um, and we'll try to see what utility can throw in as well as the city itself. Okay, great. Um, any questions on that from anyone? Oh yeah, I, I do. I'm sort of having trouble envisioning what this is gonna be like. Um, like, is it gonna be all torn up and, you know, mud and gravel and, and uh, or is most of the work gonna be done underground and, um, and it's not gonna be a mess? I think in certain sections, it's going to be tore up, but a lot of the work will also be underground. So I think that's kind of part of the idea is to kind of, could we essentially, I guess the, the thesis of, of the RFQ is, can we use a variety of different art experiences to explore and expose the Jordan River where it is not exposed, right? So how can sound artists, how can visual artists, how can, you know, those kinds of things explore the ecological impacts of the Jordan River, explore the importance of, you know, the, that kind of framework, that kind of loose uh, exploration of poetics and infrastructure. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm just thinking that it's probably a lot of it's going to be fenced off, walled off in some way, you know, for safety reasons. And I don't I mean, I'm just trying to get my head around what are the possibilities, but would it be seems to complicate things a little bit. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible, Sean, once you have a little bit more information to kind of have a brainstorming session with the Public Arts Committee to figure out what all of these like random ideas should be yeah. and then narrow it down into yeah. what would be an RFQ? Yeah, and I, and I don't have, a, I, I know that construction is going to start this year. So I know it's, it, I mean, it's a three year, like I said, a three year multi-stage, multi-million dollar project. So there can be certain avenues of downtown that are explored that wouldn't be under construction where maybe a sound artist or a video artist projection based piece at night of the Jordan River flowing or something, right? Like there can be ways to explore the project that wouldn't either impact or be at the same site as the construction or the replacement, but more it's just about exploring the fact that the Jordan River does go through downtown. And since we can't daylight it, uh, you know, what are other ways that we can use poetics as a way to explore the Jordan River, so. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, like in theory, we could even um, like sort of work ahead of the construction timeline and sort of foreshadow where the construction is gonna be moving, um, you know, or, or, or work in the opposite direction once they're finished in some areas. I mean, um, I, I, think, I think at some point, Sean, it would be helpful. I don't know if you wanna, if you want to be responsible for being the liaison with this or or if if it would make sense maybe for at some point there to be some uh meeting between utilities and you know some members of the bac to talk through it you know but i think if if we could get a sense of sort of like what their timeline is and what the i don't know what the geography of the project is you know sort of where they'll be when um, and if we can get them excited about it yeah. our side of it well, they're, they're very excited about our side. Okay. Vic is very excited about this project. So who's the director of utilities, by the way. Um, so. Yeah, but I, th I think a working session with them would be mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, I'd be happy to set that up. I can have them come to our next public art planning meeting. Perfect. That's great. Um, all right, then uh, the master plan. 
so we talked about this last meeting and um Brian, I, I've, I've, I got to be honest. Like, since you circulated that um, that document to Rachel and I, and I don't know if you're going to get into this today. Um, yes, I am. I, I'm, I'm a little bit paralyzed as far as like how these things fit together and how they should inform each other. So I don't know. If, I don't know okay. if we want to skip that and come back to it later. Or yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that because what I ended up doing is because there are so many documents and so many ideas and so many frozen aspects of this, I kind of took all the labels off and tried to figure out all of the information that we've gathered into one pool. And then from there, we build the various documents. So yeah, let's skip, skip the master plan for now if you want. Okay, cool. Um, and then updates on other projects. Sean, you're probably yeah. best equipped to do that. Yeah, so 4th Street, uh, we're under contract negotiation. Uh, hoping to close that deal uh, here shortly. Switchyard Park, I just got an update from Rachel. They have ordered the lights for one half of the installation, and they're trying to work through some design features um, and safety issues with the uh, kind of rolling car, kind of interactive installation on the other side of the structure. Uh, but she's hoping within the next three weeks to have an updated design to present to the uh, Public Art Commission and, and the full Arts Commission for approval. Um, so that we can move forward with fabrication on that. Uh, trades, I just sent the contract to Lucas Brown for being a design uh, consultant on the project. Um, so I'm hoping to get that executed in the next uh, couple days. And then 10th Street, we're, we're going through a back and forth of feedback from the property owner, the business owner, and the artist. So we're, we're working through that all right now. And then uh, I think Bryony, you added the Cardinal Spirits mural. I don't know. Do you want me to take that or do you, do you want to talk about that? Go ahead. I, I just think it's a good example of what can happen if yeah, we're paying so, attention. Yeah. So I, I think I got tagged or Bryony, you tagged me. I can't remember how that came to be. But um, Chelsea uh, Sanders from Blue Line and Haley, I'm blanking on her name. Um, do you remember her name, Bryony? Haley. Um, I no, I can look it up. So yeah, she was on uh, like a one year, she's a traveling um, spouse with an individual at IU. Who, unfortunately, she's leaving to another appointment at a different university, but um, they came together, you know, during, you know, uh, COVID to um, put up positive messages uh, around Bloomington and uh, Cardinal Spirits offered their um, location for a mural. So we were able, the bead was able to sponsor some of the material costs. We, we sponsored it, um, you know, material purchases from Bloomington Paint Wallpaper for the mural. So if you're down on the B line, um, and what was really great, I believe that Bloomington Paint Wallpaper matched our, the city's uh, sponsorship of the, of the mural. So it's a pretty robust mural on, on the outside of Cardinal Spirits down on the B line. Uh, and Allen Street, if you haven't been down there. And it's a very positive message that says, when we have each other, we have everything. Um, and yeah, it was a bit, and it was also like in terms of coming out of post COVID, it was really great to see people volunteering with masks, physically distancing as they're painting this mural uh, for this like positive affirmation in the community. So, yeah, so that was a great example of, you know, the public reaching out to say, I want to do this. How can I go about it? And finding a private partnership, but at the same time, using the city as a liaison and as a resource. Um, so if you hear things like that, you know, make sure that we're reaching out to them and making those connections as possible. All right, Nick, do you have anything else that's not on the agenda regarding public art? Not at this time. All right. Um, we talked about the grants programs. Sean, do you want to jump into Ivy Tech? Yeah, I can jump into the uh, staff report. Um, well, I guess we, let me let me real quick, just because since we're all on the public art thing, um, I'm also in it because it's tied to the public art committee, and I probably should just have this on also under the public art. Um, We've been tasked uh, with both the city and Duke to reach a, a potential project on the Levin Street substation. Um, if you all are familiar with it, it's a giant um, brick structure that encloses a Duke energy substation. It has been a, a pretty big site of graffiti um, over the past couple months since it was finished. 
And so I'm pursuing a potential partnership, public-private partnership for a mural opportunity there, a very significant mural opportunity. We touched base about it in the public art committee um, about you know maybe opening it up to a pretty diverse group of muralists to do that. But once again, nothing's set in stone and we are trying to uh, negotiate a, a pretty strategic uh, public-private partnership for another opportunity. So one of the things that we're really kind of keen on since the grant program rolled out and that we did not support individual artists per se, we're trying to counteract that with putting artists to work through murals, RFQs, public art opportunities. Um, since most artists were eligible for unemployment through the CARES Act and the expansion of uh, pandemic unemployment insurance, so now we're trying to double down as we get into the fall and that uh, unemployment is no longer being supported for independent contractors that we can put people to work. So that's just what, kind of the framework that uh, the city is interested in, me as the you know, kind of staff uh, for, for arts and culture. Um, I'm sure you all got the press release that I sent out, but um, it was a very quick decision by Ivy Tech to, um, there's been rumblings of this for years that Ivy Tech was gonna get out of the Waldron. Um, the pandemic kind of moved up their timeline apparently. And uh, we uh, had first right of refusal. So we have taken the, we are under negotiation to take over um, the building, not necessarily management of the Waldron Arts Center. So it's an all new thing. Um, I don't have a lot of detail to provide you at this time. Uh, it's gonna take quite a bit of time for the city to figure out and the transfer to be complete but I can assure you that it is a public process uh, and that the city will do the best interests uh, to all parties to ensure the longevity of whatever decision we make around that building. Um, and I'm happy to kind of answer questions or thoughts um, around that, but it's a pretty significant piece of uh, community infrastructure, mainly for the performing and also the visual arts. So I was just on, I, I was in a gallery walk meeting this morning you know, the gallery that they have on that first floor is absolutely stunning and super important, as well as, you know, I think um, for other commissioners that might not know this, Stages Bloomington, it has, you know, the only 90s person black box theater um, in the community really outside of IU, and also, uh, you know, groups like Cardinal Stage, Echo Dance Company, Jewish Theater of Bloomington, all those groups use um, the Waldron. Uh, their, either their auditorium or their um, uh, black box theater, the fire, the Rose Fire Bay. So, I, uh, yeah. And even the classroom. Yes, yes. Are there any questions regarding this, Babette? Does, does the city have any particular inclination to go into any direction other than um, uh, what it has been traditionally used for? Are there any? Uh, I, I don't know that at this moment. Like I said, we don't even own the building yet, right? So it's gonna take 90 days for the transfer to even be complete. Um, we, there are certain deed restrictions in the building. I know that WFHB is basically a, a essentially permanently housed from, now that is from the deed restriction that we provided to, um, the, the Ivy Tech, right? So I don't know historically what the deed restrictions are on the building. Um, you know, I will say this, uh, part of the reason why the Bloomington Area Arts Council failed and collapsed was because they managed the Waldron. Or the, uh, the Waldron. It's a very expensive building to maintain. Um, it is a hundred plus year old building. That's a limestone structure. Uh, so that's just, uh, you know, and that, I'm not trying to say that the city is thinking one way or another. On it. it just is the reality of the situation that our former arts council tried to run it. And that's what inevitably we brought it down. So it's a very expensive building. There's a lot of old structures, old infrastructure to it. Um, but it has served a pretty key uh, space for Cardinal, Jewish Theater, Gallery Walk, all that stuff for the past 25 years so yeah and I think the city is quite aware of that fact is, then, there, is there any uh, reason a lot of people have asked me 
um, about uh, writing letters or doing anything else to encourage the city uh, to uh, use it creatively as it has been. And especially, you know, it, it, uh, there's just a lot of things that were never done under Ivy Tech that people have felt could be done um, with it. So is there, is there anything to be a little bit more proactive or not or? Yeah, actually, Bryony reached out to me uh, yep. <laughs> about this, which I think would be a, a really great um, opportunity for the BAC to maybe inform uh, some of the newer city council members and, and the mayor's office as, as the Bloomington Arts Commission, what your all stance is as a unit, right? You guys are, you all are to inform the city on very key decisions. And so maybe a letter from the officially yep. from the BAC, you know, just reminding, you know, once again, Nothing is, we, we don't, there, there's no direction right now. We don't even own the building yet. So it is gonna be a process. So any, anything that does go out, and if you email your council representatives, I think it could be a very informative time just to say, hey, this has been an art center for a long time. These are the key aspects. It's not just for one particular group. It is a benefit for all, and this is how it can be. And it can be even better if the city or if, you know, if we find new and creative ways to use it, I don't think that would harm anybody at this moment. But I, I will say that it's going to take the city some time, and I assure you that it will be a public process. There's not going to be some backdoor deal uh, that you know, that, like I've had to, you know, there's rumors already going around that we're going to turn it into condos. That's just not that you're going to what? Turn it into condos, and that's just not accurate. <laughs> so um, you know, no. but if, but I don't think that I don't think that's a bad thing right now i think that's exactly what you know the community should be doing yeah and i i what i talked to sean about is having all of us collectively write a letter to city council saying you know this is what we have observed this is what we hope for the future and we want to be part of the process we want to um so i did reach out to quinton earlier just because he mentioned he might be late and i wanted to give him a chance to answer and he said he'd be willing to help write but if anybody else wants to help him write this letter that then we can all review and sign as a group, uh, please let me know and I will work with mm -hmm. Quentin and anybody else who wants. Would there be any, um, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, one of the things that the, the role of the, I'm still very confused about the role of the Arts Commission and the Arts Council. And to me, there's a big hole um, and the, uh, People have reached out to me because they, uh, uh, about this, uh, which, and, and, and when I say people, I'm telling you, that's a, a lot of, uh, both, both the group who originally put the Waldron together uh, and, uh, and uh, people who are very active in, in, the, in the arts and have a lot of um, uh, uh, clout, for lack of a better word. And I guess um, my question is that who um, it would if if we were to spearhead some kind of a committee to come up with different ideas, different suggestions, what have you, um, uh, would that be under us, or is it just a bunch of people getting together, or would it work to have just a a, a, a meeting to try to understand some of the history? and would have you a little bit better. I don't know, I'm just asking. Well, the city will lead some of them. Um, I think the other challenge that we have is that we have groups like the Art Alliance Greater Bloomington, we have Arts Forward Bloomington, we have uh, the Bloomington Theater Board. So there's a variety of groups that I think are already interested in doing this work and asking those hard questions. I think the, the other challenge that we face right now is that we are also coming out of the global pandemic and the economic downturn that's gonna cause for a variety of just general performing groups and theater groups um, to be able to get out of uh, that, right? So I think, um, I think what I can do, Babette, is report back and obviously the BAC will be heavily involved uh, in whatever we do. And Nick, do you, do you got something to say? I, mean, I can wait till you're finished. That's why I raised my hand. But. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I, th that's basically it is that I can keep you all abreast. I don't think at this time that the BAC should be 
spearheading anything about the Waldron. We just don't, there's so many, so many things going on right now in terms of the, the transfer, you know, the, the, at one point there was mentioned that the, all the, all this, everything in the space was going to stay. That is not now true. So what happens to all the lighting infrastructure that gets taken out, all the chairs that get taken out. I mean, there's a huge, uh, there's a lot of different moving parts and there's a lot of, uh, so it's just too early to tell at this moment. I know that's hard to tell to the arts community, but we will be able to work through this. And I, I, sh I just want to assure the arts commission that you all will be uh, involved in that and you all will have to be uh, liaisons out into the community around these conversations about the future of the Waldron. Yeah, I was just going to say that I, I think there's maybe a, a middle ground approach that stays true to what I think is the BAC's purpose and, and mission um, that that still prevents us from sitting back and being complacent. You know, I think that um, perhaps one thing we should do in this letter is not just speak to the history of the Waldron and why it's important and what groups use it, but perhaps we should comment on what we think the public process should be and what it should include. Um, and that way it's not, we're not taking on the responsibility of spearheading it as the BAC um, and, and sort of having it spiral beyond our capacity and, and beyond our role. But I think we can articulate to the city, um, you know, in council that, um, you know, we recommend a certain number of stakeholder meetings and here are the stakeholders that should be invited and included. Um, you know, if we think there should be a period of public comment, we can suggest how, um, how that could be received. Um, you know, so I think that like, if, if we speak to the process and really help make sure that there's a, there's a really effective process, um, that can inform the city without taking on the burden um, upon the commission itself. Okay, so who wants to help Quentin and Nick draft this letter? <laughs> I will certainly contribute what little I can. I'm happy to contribute as well. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Do we have a deadline for this letter? Just, I'm working really well on deadlines right now. <laughs> Nick, what what is a de feasible deadline for you to work on a first draft? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't personally have to be the one to do it. I mean, I could. Um, I, I think maybe it's as simple as... Um, no, I think if you talk to Quentin... Yeah and share this with him, especially since he couldn't be at the meeting. Yeah. Um, you know, bounce some ideas back and forth. He can draft it and then the four of you review it, give it a first pass, and then you share it with everybody else kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I would think um, it's, it's reasonable to get all that together within the next two weeks. Yep, sounds good. Also, I can, um, I know Gal I was at the gallery walk meeting this morning, so, you know, they're drafting a letter as well, so we can cross paths with that. And I think Arts Forward Bloomington is going to do the same as well. So we can try to at least cross pollinate in terms of um, education and awareness about the history of the, the Waldron, but also, you know, yeah, the recommendations that you all think would be best for the city to pursue, which I think is a great proactive way of not just voicing yourselves, but also participating. Sounds good. Anything else, Sean, that you need to share through your staff report? Uh, I would just also keep in mind, I think some of you all have been notified of this, but if you haven't, I'll, I'll reshare this out. Um, next week is the hospital the town hall, which I think all of you should be at if you can. Um, you know, that in terms of civic infrastructure, you know, um, it's a 25 acre site in our downtown core. Uh, you know, it's going to be a 10 year project, so it's not uh, overnight, but one of the early recommendations for the hospital site was an art center. So, you know, making sure that you all as commissioners, if you're available to be at the town hall virtually um, offering comment about this would be, um, it would be important to, for you all to voice yourself. So I just want to make sure you all are aware of that. Uh, and I can send out an email with the Facebook invite and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. What day is that or what are the details? I, I added it to the calendar. 
Okay. Great. You should have gotten a calendar invite with that information. If you um, did last Tuesday, right? Yes. Um, yes. I'll, yes. I'll, yeah. I'll look it up. Uh, I, I attended a small session where we're bouncing off ideas and there was interest, you know, from the other people in my group about a cultural center. There was also conversations about um, artists and residents, housing, um, galleries, uh, creative spaces, a performance plaza, things like that. So there's definitely enough there for, to start the conversation. But if we really want to achieve something like that, they need to hear it from different places all the time kind of thing. So the more we can get voices together to do that, I think the more successful we'll be in getting some of the cultural aspects into that hospital space. All right, anything else thus far? Any questions? All right, so if you'll switch documents, Nick. As I mentioned earlier, at some point with the master plan and the strategic plan and all of the information that Tyler shared with us the other day, um, not that one, Sean. Oh, what do you get? What do you, what do you want? The... Um, or here, if you go back one, one folder into the BAC 2020. Oh, wait, sorry. Admin strategic plan. Uh, sorry, go back the rethought document number two. Oh, okay. Number two. Uh, um, so basically I tried to take all of the information that Tyler presented everything that we got from um, the survey, from the interviews, and the one question that most of you answered, taking all of that and parse it into a single document that would then inform the strategic plan, the master plan, all of these other driving documents, because I think we're getting very stuck. We've been working on this for eight months, um, kind of nonstop. So at this point, I think we need, we need to think about it in a different way to get us past this hurdle, past this visual that we want to accomplish. And also, you know, there's, um, if you can go all the way up, Sean, please. Yeah. Um, there's a, you know, COVID, there's all of these changes happening that really makes us have to rethink what our role is and what our best course of action would be moving forward. So the first thing that I did was distill what is our purpose and I narrow it down to connect, guide, and enable. There's many ways we can do that and different groups that this could apply to. And this is something that you'll see as I go over all of these different parts. But basically, it's down to three things, uh, connect, guide, and enable. So our core tasks are public art. And now there's not much change here from what we've been doing um, throughout this time, which is oversee the 1% of the arts, grow the public art collection of the city, um, guide and oversee the public art master plan, foster local artists, and increase cultural visibility to encourage tourism. Then there's the grant program, where we are gonna provide operating support and project support once we get those projects back up and running. And we need to educate and support artists and organizations in regards to what the BAC grants and other grants that would be applicable to them, so the IAC and things like that at the same time that we want to advocate for funding increases. And I know that Sean does a lot of this on our behalf, but we can also step it up a little bit. Um, sorry, I, I tried to scroll, but I can't. <laughs> and then the third section that I added is support. And this is where we really start to take all of that information into one pool. And one of them is to encourage collaboration and support among cultural institutions. So it's taking the Arts Alliance, the Arts Forward Bloomington, ourselves, all of these groups, and really having us work together towards the common goal that we have as a city. So figuring out exactly what each role is and how they're going to accomplish and just kind of keeping taps on each other. And that is very easy to do um, through a, I don't know, quarterly meeting, a, you know, phone call or something like that, just check in and keep each other accountable. Um, guide and oversee cultural efforts for the good of the city as undertaken by other groups. So that falls into that same um, group. Host industry-based brainstorm sessions. So be it theater, music, visual arts, word, 
Um, and I have several proposals of what those breakdowns could potentially be. And these are an hour and a half to two hour sessions where reality, in reality, there is no prep work. It's just gathering everybody together because that is what I, we keep hearing people saying, we want to collaborate, we want to work with others, we want to see what others are doing, how can I help, how can I receive help? So if you gather all of your theater people together once or twice a year in a room and you guide them through a conversation, then a lot can happen from that. Also provide recognition for a job well done. This is something that I heard several times and it doesn't necessarily need to be like the Ivy Tech Awards, which I suppose are no longer going to happen. I don't know if, <laughs> if that was tied to the Waldron or if that's independent of the Waldron. Um, but in, tied to the Waldron. Just okay. Yep. So there's no longer an issue of overlapping there, but it was also just recognizing other aspects, not, not just in your traditional sense, but um, high quality community engagement, inclusion, um, board of directors awareness, and we can come up again with a bunch of things um, that we can, as a city, recognize. Uh, I heard that a lot. Like, I want to be recognized from the, by the city to, for a job well done. Uh, create a youth-centered program to encourage emerging artists under 25 years of age. And that is something that we can also collaborate with, um, be it with the high schools and IU or other people, or just do it ourselves, where basically you integrate them into gallery walk at the end of the school year or something like that. You can, it, it can be thought in many ways. Um, but again, it's something that might require a few hours of work to set it up, but eventually it's self-running and not much needs to be done. And then communicate via social media. Now, this is a contentious uh, topic. There's, there seems to be no middle ground on this one, and I'll go over it in, uh, through the tools and methodology. So I know this is a lot to digest. I'll go through all of it, and then you, know, you will have a chance to actually read it on your own and go over it. But if there's any specific questions right after, we can go over those things. So all of this can be applied through tools and methodology. So public art, you know, we have we work with staff to oversee the, rele the release of the one percent for the arts related RFQs, uh, and we make recommendations as Nick uh, shared earlier through that process. We support staff as needed in making sure that the one percent of the arts projects are actually completed, and then you know if there's a ribbon cutting and all that. Uh, support staff in the ribbon cutting and activation. You know, can can we do more to um, unveil these these projects like Nina Chanel you know you had the workshop things like that what else can be done for the benefit of the community other than just have uh, a nice ribbon cutting and everybody walks away as far as the grants it that's very straightforward it's just managing the grant funding provided by the city you know running the program provide guidance and education review applications award the grants, review the final report, and host an annual check-in with all of the grantees. And that's what we were speaking about earlier that we're going to do uh, shortly as soon as everybody gets verified and completed. And then as far as the support goes, you know, having using the BAC website that the city hosts where we can have the resources and organizations and artists and fabricators, uh, a calendar of things that are happening just beyond just our uh, monthly meetings. Um, you know, I'm not saying it, it's a visit Bloomington calendar with all of the events. No, it's just relevant events pertaining to the BAC. Uh, we've also talked about having grantee case studies that people can relate to and be like, okay, that kind of sounds like my project. It is feasible, it, making the grants basically less intimidating. And something that has been bounced around is a monthly message from the chair basically kind of saying, this is what we're up to. This is what's coming. Um, you know, if you have any questions, let us know. Then there's the issue of uh, Facebook. There is a BAC Facebook page um, that has been dormant for about three years, and it is an opportunity to share news and provide updates to all of in Bloomington. Again, from the BAC perspective, it's not about events. It's not about you know go see this play. Go to this other event, it's really about what we're doing. And then we could also have Facebook groups for the 
for art, art organizations. So for example, like the Bloomington Theater Group. And it's just basically overseeing a communication with those groups that we've hosted in that hour and a half to two hour meeting. Um, so that it, people can share props or um, exchange venue spaces, help with tech, that kind of thing. So it's just an overseeing of these conversations and network and collaboration, which is what people have been asking that they want. There could be a BAC Instagram account that we all have access to in order to help activate both the BAC presence and what's happening around town. And that is a, hey, I am here at Gallery Walk. Hey, I'm at the BCT for this play. Um, and it's really the, the commissioners just posting on behalf of everything that's happening. Uh, the, if you can scroll down, Sean, please. Well, too much. Uh, Bi-monthly working sessions. So as I said, having those sessions with um, by industry or by group, it, it, can, it can change. Also topics that are relevant to different people like artist pay or venue sharing, um, education. And that is something that obviously we would set up ahead of time and you would publish a schedule and we promote it properly and people can show up and to talk about those things that interest them. Um, the quarterly meetings with arts group to enable that support and accountability. So arts forward Bloomington, um, arts Alliance and so on and so forth. And finally, an end of year summit that can be a one day or kind of like a week event, which, you know, ideally would be now this week where we're announcing all of the grantees and handing out the checks like we did last year. Uh, the youth has highlighted any recognition can be noted and a bit of a celebration for the arts in Bloomington is held. And if you can scroll, Sean. Then another document that is floating around is kind of what, what is the structure of the BAC. So from the city, we have a staff and an intern. And as commissioners, we have 11 commissioners, including a chair, secretary, treasurer, public art committee chair, grants committee chair, and I'm proposing adding kind of like leadership positions that are not necessarily a committee, but it's somebody who kind of carries that flag proudly and is like uh, about marketing or about education or about inclusion, community engagement. And again, this is a draft and what these items could potentially be is up for discussion if they, if you think this is a good idea. And some of the commissioner responsibilities would be attending 10 out of the 12 monthly meetings, serving at least one subcommittee. Um, and most of this is not new, but um, attend the city council meeting that takes place after the grand ceremony tonight um, and assist with social media and marketing promotion of events, projects and organizations supported by the BAC. Uh, and this can be on a rotating schedule, the whole Facebook, things like that. It could very really easily be like, Rachel, you're in charge in March, the bet you're in April you know, meeting to meeting kind of thing. You get one month out of the year where that's what you're overseeing and then you can forget about it the rest of the year. And ongoing active participation in the arts and culture community. So going and being present within the, the groups. Uh, and finally, Tyler helped quite a bit on this in the draft of those potential meetings. Um, you know, if it's by industry, you're talking about music, theater, dance, visual arts in 2D and 3D, digital art, literature, crafts and artisans, uh, and then for profit art businesses and businesses who support the arts or, you know, narrow, make it even broader. It's like performing gallery festivals, um, digital medium and visual arts. And finally, by business model would be a third option where it's okay, let's get all individual artists together, nonprofits for-profits and businesses who want to find ways to support the arts. And then finally, some of those topics that people keep mentioning in the surveys is like they want to know more about. And I know we do the ones for grants, but uh, formalizing it here just to have it make sure it's in the list. So this is a very long um, and thorough document in just trying to figure out, you know, what is it that we want to do beyond just managing the 1% for the arts and the grants program based on the questions that have been being posed to us and the surveys? Um, 
And so this is just a first stab at trying to answer all of that in a way that doesn't necessarily create a whole lot of work um, for everybody, especially for Sean, because I know that Sean even has some limitations on how many hours he can allocate to the BAC um, and how many meetings he can attend and things like that. So I don't want to overtake on that. Uh, so if you have any questions, if it's at all possible after all of this to have any questions, let me know. Barney, I think this is a terrific document because I think it summarizes everything very succinctly. But I think the biggest the biggest issue, you know, point that you have is under structure and commissioners, where uh, your um, yes, your point B, uh, where where you're talking about additional leadership positions. I think that basically that's going to be the key to everything else. And that um, if you if those aren't set up and defined, and then uh, staff, so to speak, uh, then everything else just becomes a lot of um, talk. And um, and I, I I think that's where you know the other thing is that in order to it you know for eleven people uh, basically. It's a lot of structure and responsibility. And the other, the other thing to kind of um, dissipate that is if in some of these other uh, places, the commissioners basically would take on the responsibility of heading it, but also going, being able to reach out maybe in the community to get other people to work with them um, and, and under them to do that, I mean, with community engagement, I know that there are, that's, that's where, you know, the, doing things with children or doing things, you know, whether it was a hospital, town hall, anything, anything, that's a big one, but there are a lot of people in the community who I think could be tapped to, um, to break that down. So that's my, all I wanna say. Rachel? Uh, yeah, I think that's a, a, a good call, Babette, of like really tapping into those that are already doing a lot of this work and just making sure that they're connected with those who want to receive that type of work. Um, my only, my concern, first, Bryony, it's amazing. I can't believe you put all those documents into one and it's only four pages. Um, but I, my only concern with kind of everything and just something I want to flag for us to think about is I am very hesitant for the BAC to become a programming or events organization because our role is not to be putting programs on for the community. Um, that's I'm totally game for helping set workshops up and connecting folks um, in regards especially to public art and grants because those types of workshops that we do anyways like that is very directly related to what we do but additional workshops i i lean more towards agreeing with a bet of like who is already doing that type of work and can we get them to host those programs because event planning and project managing is a lot of work for anyone and it's not something that we should be doing as a volunteer commission that's just my two cents all right. I will respond, but you know, <laughs> I want everybody to. No, I was just going to say, I'm not suggesting that we do it, but one of the reasons the Waldron initially fell apart was because once, once all the funds were done, once it was built and it, and it was, you know, an enormous piece of fundraising for the community. Um, there wasn't anybody, any one group that was going to run it. And that's, and that's how everything that in a nutshell, that's how a lot of things progress. And here, what I'm seeing is that, um, is that one of the issues in Bloomington is that we have so many active groups, but the lack of, there's a lack of, co of coordination. So simply if, uh, as an example, if I were the head of community engagement, and I would say, fine, we need a children's program. 
who are the three groups that are doing this now and put the ball in their court, but you have to follow, to, to actually do it, but you have to follow up through it. Somebody has to be the alpha. And totally. that, I, that's what I see as a problem. We're the alpha for grants. We're the alpha for public art. And those are the two things we do well. And maybe that's all that's possible. I don't know. Okay. So I, I think there might be a slight misunderstanding on that aspect. And basically my how I visualize that is mm -hmm. you're in charge of community engagement. It's just keeping that mentality of community engagement as we go through the process of grants and public art. So there's somebody in the BAC that that is their main point of focus. It's not necessarily creating a new program for kids. It's making sure that the activation of the 1% uh, project gets a community engagement, that the grants um, applications can uh, have a community engagement in them. It's just overseeing that priority of the BAC within the things that we have. Okay. And then, so that, that would be for the kind of like leadership positions. And then in terms of your, of the events, Rachel, again, this being a draft, it doesn't include too many words. Otherwise it would be a 40 page document. It's enabling people to communicate and to come together. So it's not that you're providing programming. You're just saying theater people next Tuesday from four to six, you're all getting together to talk. Uh, obviously there's some, just a little bit of guidance as to what that is, but you're not really creating programming. You're just saying, I hear you. You all want to collaborate. You all want to talk to each other more. You want this. So I'm going to enable the space and the time for you to do so. And depending on what breakdown we end up doing, if we end up doing something like that, it's figuring out, yes, you know, who's going to speak, who needs to present, who can share ideas. Um, but it, it all comes together fairly simply because you are just enabling that communication collaboration versus creating something new. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And of course, obviously we'd still plan the award, like, uh, grants awards or whatever like that's an event that we already planned yeah so I'd expect us to still do that yes yeah something like that absolutely Nick I, I think I think that clarification was helpful in events I do wonder and 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 maybe maybe I'm not fully understanding but I do wonder if even that is too far um like I I hesitate to think that we should even be booking a room or picking the time. I, I feel like it's maybe, maybe our role stops at saying, hey, we think that the theater community should have a workshop and the BAC would love to attend and participate, but we need someone in the, in the theater community to raise their hand and they run it. They book the room, they figure out who's gonna talk, they figure out the time. I think like com completely keeping us out of logistics, um, I just, I, I, my, my worry is that like, if we sort of like half step into it, it becomes a very slippery slope where it all just like slides back to us. Um, and then at a point, I think like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I worry that we're taking on too much. Um, yeah, I don't know. How, how, how does that fit with how you were picturing it? Yeah, as, as I said, I, yes, you would be tapping in, into the other groups, I, you can't, we cannot work in isolation. Um, but I do feel that there is a need for somebody to kind of rally the troops and get everybody realigned um, because there is, you have all these other groups and everybody's kind of doing it, but kind of not. And it's just, I heard so many times that I, that this is what people want and there's nobody else in the city who can actually do it in a way we're kind of like the big brother of everybody else. So if, you know, we get it started in a way that you say, okay, this is the schedule and I can very easily, you know, find somebody, a representative for each industry or group or whatever we end up doing and, you know, enable them again, going back to the enable and support process. 
just enable them and support them in getting it started, then eventually you could walk away from this if it becomes, you know, part of the part of the um, city fabric in a way to have these conversations. Mm-hmm. But nobody else can, from my perspective, can actually rally it all together. You know, the theater person is going to do it for the theater group, but then you're going to have a segregated group doing it for music. And all of a sudden, you know, you have all these groups and you're actually making it worse in the sense that we have Arts Forward Bloomington, Arts Alliance. We kind of know, you know, what um, Artisan Alley does. We can oversee it. But if we add to the noise, then it's going to just be diluted and nothing will come out of it. Well, I, just to chime in real quick. Uh, I, so first of all, thank you all for all your input, uh, all the energy around the multiple plans, all that kind of stuff. I, I think what we're trying to bring clarity to is like, you know, statutorily grants and public art is, nor- is normally where are your jurisdiction overview lies, right? So it's a question of, compa- I think ultimately you all as commissioners, and I would love to hear from the midterm commissioners, which would be Karen, Sam, Elizabeth, who have been on for a little while, and then the new commissioners, Valeria, Essence, and Elliot, who have fresh eyes on this. But um, so it's going to be ultimately, it's going to come down to a capacity issue of what you all are willing to put in and how you manage that. I think I'm already starting to do some of this stuff just because of COVID and Bryony and Rachel's been involved in a couple of these calls. You know, I have an ongoing venue call. I have an ongoing festival call. So I'm willing to like kind of kind of lead the torch on that if I can get participation. And I, I just think it's a matter of figuring out like actually do we phase this out in the next three years rather than saying this is a year overview or a month, like holding ourselves accountable to an unreasonable schedule because we're going to have public art projects that pop up. We're going to have, you know, the grants program that happens every year. And I think, um, you know, one way to think about it is maybe the first year is may- is focusing on arts venues, performing arts, the major, the major players, and then it shakes out from there to get deeper into artist pay venue needs, that kind of stuff. So I don't think it necessarily has to be like, this is a, a one-stop shop document for the 12 year, their 12 month calendar, but more of a three or five year overlook, which could, because I think we'll need to have kind of smart goals on that. And I'll stop talking because I would love to hear from Karen, Sam and Elizabeth from their perspective, and then also Valerie Essence and Elliot. Karen. Um, it seems to me that a lot of this is what Arts Forward is envisioning themselves to be doing. Um, I mean, they've had a couple events that are sort of thematic. They, you know, I think we have to be really careful not, you know, not to be encroaching into the territory of a new organization that's really trying to find their way. That doesn't mean that we can't collaborate with them or uh, communicate with them. Um, but, but I sort of agree that, uh, I mean, that's what I thought their focus was. And so maybe we need to do what we can to help them become more functional. Uh, it's hard to know because of COVID and everything what might have happened otherwise. We don't really know yeah. um, or what they're thinking. I'm on their steering committee. So I'm, I'm at the table when they have their monthly meetings and things like that. Their topics are on a quarterly basis and they are more advocacy centered than industry based. So it's not about theaters helping each other necessarily. It's about, you know, uh, transportation in downtown, for example, that was their last meeting. Right. Um, right. So, and, and that's why I would want to have like a quarterly meeting with them to say, okay, what are you doing? How can I support you? Go. And three months later, there's, okay, how did that go? There's a bit of an accountability because I think that's one of the things that hasn't really happened. Just peer pressure, if you may. It's, it's not like they have to respond to me or the, the BAC. It's just a bit of a peer pressure of somebody's checking in, somebody else is paying attention. What, you know, we need to stay on track with what we said we were going to be doing. Um, so, yes, what those topics would be would be relevant to talk to them about it at some point. Um, right now, they're a bit in hiatus, if you may, and uh, hopefully we'll get back back on track as well. 
but again, it's just. Do you think they're open to hearing, um, you know, the industry oriented, you know, to, to maybe uh, expanding a little bit um, or, you know, the, the basic um, artist problems, even multi industries working around certain things. I mean, you know, you've attended their meetings, so do do there's there's problems? potential. Um, there's some growing up to be seen first in the sense of, you know, who's doing what, who's actually promoting. Sorry, I was busy this month, so you know that didn't happen. Um, and that that was the, one of the problems they had the last meeting. For example, nine of us showed up at the BCT for a big gathering, and uh, it it was we had they had people from the city presenting on transportation and things like that, and it was a little, um, you know, in a way sad to have people from the city presenting to basically six steering committee and three extra people from the public. Do you know, do you know what, what is their membership right now? The numbers? Uh, there were just over a hundred the last okay. time I heard. So there is potential for partnership and there should be partnership there. Um, and I think the more we do that, the easier it will be to eventually let go of things. But I think it's just getting everybody communicating and talking and getting things off the ground. Somebody else, please. Uh, I'll chime in. Um, so um, I guess most of this information is going to be based off of my meeting with Brian e and John Armstrong, where, but he was like all about collaborating with other theater. He was a theater guy and he wanted to collaborate with other theater companies, with, whether it's sharing equipment or, or just having a beer and, and getting to know people. Um, and so like, I'm in agreement with Brian that like we should make this happen somehow. But I guess I'm also with Nick in that, like it's, are we overstepping our role and, or alternatively just like, it's a lot more work to get all these logistics and to promote it. So I, I don't, I guess the first idea that comes into mind is like, maybe they host them at their own venues. I don't know, just like booking a room and setting a time and then like getting people to actually show up is a little bit more involved than it sounds, especially getting new people show up. Like the promotion part, I think is going to be tough. I don't, I don't know. Especially yes, nowadays. yes, and, yes and no, because really if you say, okay, John and theater people, let's have this session. Uh, most likely John would say, let's have it at BAFT, no problem. Um, and this is obviously once people can gather again, you know. Uh, and then they all in a way know each other and they talk to each other. And the people that you want to show up is just the theater people. You're not trying to reach the general public necessarily. It's just so that they can network and they can figure out, you know, they're all talking about you know, can we share props? I, you know, they keep buying the same things and spending a lot of money on getting the same things over and over. And that's a really small thing that they could all work together towards. So getting that group of people, I don't, personally, I don't think it's that hard because you know exactly who they are. So it's not a matter of like marketing and publicizing this. It's reaching out to all the theaters and saying, this is happening. Yeah, I guess it's I guess if it's more of a, a small, intimate meeting, that makes sense. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's having those that industry or that group just come together. Um, another thing that he had mentioned was like kind of a gallery walk of sorts to go to each company just so that you could see what they're up to. So that's why in my head I was like, well, what if they just each time they met, they hosted it at this other, another theater company's place? Yeah, that could work. Um, just so, just to expand on that for those who were not at that meeting, it was kind of like a gallery walk, but for theater one month and a gallery walk for music another time, and having people go from one venue to the other. Rachel, that sounds very similar to the chambers business after hours. Um, I don't know, like I know that the chamber, like they have different members um plan it every month at their business and it rotates to a different business every month but i can't recall and like the business manages all the logistics and everything like that 
I can't remember though if the chamber actually provides funds for them to host those events or if it's hosted out of the business's own pocket. And that's where we might get some questions if we're asking organizations, especially nonprofits, to host one of the month's meetings or gatherings. I mean, like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if someone's like, let's just go to the bishop and we'll have beers there and talk. But I'm sure that there are some that are like, yeah, you could come to our space, but who's going to pay for the food? <laughs> I don't know. Just yeah. And, that, and that's why something like that I didn't actually include in the document, because that 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 is an actual like almost festival event that I don't want to take on and I don't think we should. Uh, we don't have a lot of time left, so I am going to make sure that everybody gets a chance to say at least something. Uh, so those who haven't spoken, please do so. Elizabeth? Um, I guess I was just thinking it's sort of an interesting problem with the, um, with these events you're talk you were all talking about. Um, Cause you're right. We, as we've seen, like everyone, when they talk about what they want from us, it's like they want this kind of event, but it's also like not necessarily something we do or have done in the past. It's sort of outside of our purview. It's just when we're talking about like, say hypothetically, we're talking about the theater people and, we, and all the theater people want to like get together and like have a little caucus for their industry. And I'm just, I'm not entirely sure what they need us for really. Like what, what can we do that makes it, better what, what are we bringing to the con to the problem by doing that I don't, sorry anybody else want to answer that from their perspective uh, no I think it's just really that enabling everybody talks about doing this and every, it's a whole lot of talk 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 but it doesn't actually happen so it's just taking the time to put everybody in the same room and in a way walking away um, and just providing that support and th that's really the the role that i see yeah i i want to say something that came to my mind i i do see it and i, I can understand the difficulties of uh, doing what it should be very simple just like you're saying hey uh, here is the time get together you guys told me that you want to do that and uh, so go there i it's kind of I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but it's kind of um, my concern is if we are putting energy into something that we may not uh, really get a, a, a substantial response. And um, I agree that um, a lot of times people say that's what we need, but. Um, is that really what they need? So um, I, I don't know. I feel that it's uh, putting ourselves into this situation. I think enabling is a good idea, but um, I, I'm not sure if having the space and the time that will happen because uh, uh, one of the difficulties with the event is really finding a time and the day and the uh, for people to agree that yes, we can do it. So I don't know, it doesn't seem to be something very fluid and easy to go. It maybe need more brainstorming if we want to do it. One of the things that came out to my mind is like, a, but we don't wanna have an event, but maybe like a, if they want to, uh, make an event where it's also more informative and that they can grow as well. And what other people have been doing, uh, maybe a speaker, or if they want to organize an event. But I, my question is just saying, this is the place and this is the time. Get together and um, yeah, let me know. Not, I'm, I think I'm saying a little rude, but I, it's just what came to my mind. So if you... Um, if you want to know what I what came to my mind, <laughs> essence. Yeah, I um, understand everybody's um, hesitation, but I, I do see the value in being that link. That's what we've been talking about over the past few months. We're meeting, like how to be that link that uh, connects these organizations so that they're not just scattered around Bloomington. Um, and I saw in the 
in the comments over here that, um, was it Sean? Yeah, um, recommended that we could do a Zoom, like mm -hmm. organize instead of reserving a place in a time. Uh, well, it'll still have to be a time, but instead of um, reserving the place, we could start off, do like a trial run with a with a two, maybe three groups and see how it goes. Um, and then if it seems like people are showing up and they have the interest and it's not just people from one organization, then we can see, you know, after COVID, if um, it would be worth it to um, try to take it into an in-person um, town hall or whatever we're calling it. Okay. Um, Babette? I just want to say one thing. I think Essence's big point of the value of being a link and that it is so important and that I think we should, instead of worrying about the logistics of this, we should decide whether this, whether we want to do this or not. I, I can guarantee you the logistics are negligible. It's very, I, I've done tons of these um, for, uh, I, you know, I can name all the different organizations and stuff uh, through SCORE. They're simple, they're easy to do. They can be done with zero budget. So it's not logistics. Do we want, do we want to, do we see that value in us being the link? I personally do. I think it's very, I think it's critical and really important um, for for an arts commission. Um, and that's my two cents. All right. So actually, oh, sorry. Elizabeth, go ahead. I, say, I think what um, Essence was saying, I think that's a good idea and a good point. And I think, I mean, it, sort of that would be a, that might be a good way to start things at least. I just want to call out Elliot real quick. If Ellie, you there? I mean, any, you're new to town, but you're also new to the commission, so I'd, I'd love your insight on this. Maybe he... I don't think he's there. Looks like his he... mic's off. I'll make sure all staff are okay. Well, he can. Right, we'll shoot him an email. <laughs> Minus all right. So, based on time, um, and you know, I, I, we can hash this out. I'll, for for a couple of hours, I am sure. What I'm going to ask of you is to think about not so much what we've done in the past versus what we sh should be doing is really figure out what our identity is. So you know, are we the link? Are we? Wh what is it that we are, and how can we best accomplish that? And then go into that document and add notes, um, comments, whatever you want, and we will work through all of this. As I said, this is my proposal as I kind of distilled all of that information, um, I, eliminating a lot of things that were mentioned fewer times than, than these. And then the other thing is, you know, we'll have to go over what the social media aspect of it of this would be, because that is, I know, another contentious aspect of should we or shouldn't we. Um, I will go ahead and also add some notes to kind of clarify a little bit of the document uh, for all of you. But as I, I, I had wanted to keep it as simple as possible so that it wouldn't be just paragraphs and paragraphs of information. Um, Sean, do we have anything else that we need to look at at this point? I mean, I think if everybody has time to just maybe go around, if, if we have time for commissioner announcements, I think it would be helpful. Um, but yeah, I, I just want to thank everybody's input. I think these are very tough questions and very yep. tough questions. Um, I, some of you, I, I appreciate the, the throwbacks to the bead meetings where we would email 150 people and 10 people would show up. But I think the Zoom calls that I've been participating in have been pretty successful. And I think, I think that's actually the format we should go forward with, even though we'll be hungry to get out of that. I actually think that's the best way to do it. And then we can also have a Facebook Live component for people to chime in if they want to. But I, I, I do think I, I, it might be good to further the check-ins that we've been building from what Sam was mentioning with BAFT. I, I do also think because we could be the facilitator, like what Rachel just mentioned, uh, earlier about that sounds a lot like what the chamber is doing. Can we foster, can we be the link to push that group to go to the chamber to do that, right? So I think, you know, that idea of being optic, 
you know, optically present matters in the community, and especially matters right now. Um, I also, I think, Elizabeth, you brought up a really good point of what is the value of them participating in that, which I think would be really, you know, beyond just grants and public art, I think that is a valid criticism and a tough question that I think all of us need to chew on, right? Is, mm -hmm. is it going to inform the grant program and eventually public art, or does it inform this other thing that the commission should be a part of? Um, but it's also going to tie into, and the ultimate question is a question of capacity for you all. You all have day jobs, you all have lives, you all have a variety of other things going on. So it's going to be a question of where your capacity lies and how you see your all's term over the next, you know, if it, your three-year term, all that kind of stuff. So just food for thought. But I would love to bounce around and just do commissioner announcements and then we can end the meeting. Rachel? I just have a quick question, actually. Um, uh, I know that the chambers, like, their thing is very focused on for-profit businesses and such, but do you think the chamber would be potentially interested in like hosting a specific arts members like thing where they could actually- They, 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 they do, they do have an arts member thing, but also, you know, with the COVID stuff, they're trying to be more expansive. So they're doing this okay. summer of support thing. And I know that Aaron Erdman White has been heavily involved. Okay. So there's some opportunities there that we could look at a specific week focus in the summer you know, because they're basically they've chopped up Taste of Bloomington over the course of the right. summer to look at support. So they're calling it the summer of support. So I think there's a there's a direct opportunity for the BAC to be involved in that directly, which would be really nice. So yeah. All right, commissioner announcements. Nothing. Well, if anybody wants to go into the Monroe County Theater page on Facebook, their episode two of their podcast is up, and I did a monologue, a Shakespeare monologue, if anybody's interested, <laughs> um, just as a way to support what they were trying to do there. Um, and if there's nothing else, last chance for commissioner announcements. All right, we shall adjourn this meeting at 636, so just six minutes over. And if we could give a round of applause to Marnina for facilitating taking notes and, and setting all this up on the digital platform or on live Facebook and all that stuff. So thank you, Marnina, for all your hard work. And thank you to the commissioners, too, on this meeting. I know um, you all are putting a lot of thought and energy into this. Um, please dive deep into that document. And, yes, please. Yeah, let's make comments. Let's, let's, let's really kind of move forward and think about the potential that we have in the coming months. Who are we and what are we going to be for our community? All right. Have a good evening.